welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a girl talk and we're going to be talking about babies and bodies. I've wanted to talk about this for a while actually and it's something I covered a little bit after I had my baby <laughs> who's now two years old. I think it's a topic that I thought a lot about at the time like after giving birth and like you know in within that whole period and then I kind of got on with my life and everything but I feel like it's a really important thing to talk about because there are so many women who are either thinking about getting pregnant and wondering what it would be like like after they have a baby or what will happen to their bodies during the whole process there's women that are pregnant at the moment and maybe wondering what it's like like giving birth after birth there's so many stories that you hear that can kind of scare you while you're pregnant as well and you kind of don't know what to believe i feel like it's something that's kind of hushed over a lot of the time and um a lot of women think it's TMI to talk about it and because it's such a personal thing, because it's about our bodies, it's about our vulvas. The whole area of it has been very like polished over and kind of ignored. So yeah, I think it's so important to talk about and to have a discussion about and to not be ashamed about, you know? Like what actually drove me to really want to do this video in particular is that I was on the underground the other day and I saw a campaign like all over the, like going up the escalator. Um, and it was the mother, mother cares campaign where it's like lots of different women's postpartum bodies. Um, and on each one it says, uh, like, isn't she beautiful? I think while well, like the, the mum's holding her child. Um, but it's obviously focused on her body and her like postpartum belly, stretch marks and everything. And I thought it was so powerful, so different to see that on the underground. It just made me feel like things are progressing a lot of you know, for to show those bodies in such a normal way. It's so good for women and so good for men because they get a more realistic vision of what postpartum bodies can look like as opposed to what they might be seeing on social media or definitely what they're seeing in films. So yeah, that made me think about talking about it a bit more and about how it's so normal. In all the questions and everything, it's all just my opinion. You know, I'm not professional. So I asked you guys if you had any questions on this topic and I had loads of really good ones back. Uh, I'm gonna try and whiz through them. There's quite a lot. So follow me on Instagram if you're not, by the way. If, and if you wanna be asking me questions for girls talks, cause I usually post on my Insta stories um, for your questions. Okay, so I've heard awful stories of having to get stitches all over. Now I'm scared. Um, don't be scared because each birth is totally different. Like you might not have to have any stitches. You might have to have a few stitches. You might have to have a lot of stitches. Honestly, like my my personal advice is if you if you've already just given birth, the midwife putting a few stitches in is not going to phase you. At that point, you're just like, oh my god, it's over. <laughs> you've got your little baby there. Like your mind, you're really really not focused on if you're having stitches or not, and if that's going to hurt. Like I'm planning to have a baby again. And this time, like, I'm not going to be worried about stitches at all. But I remember when I was pregnant, actually, it was something that I did worry a bit about. And I was, I was so scared of them, like, like, cutting me a lot. Um, but they didn't have to do that for me. And, you know, so many women have pain relief as well. So that will help you out with stitches as well. Um, do you think there's more pressure on influencers to snap back after having a baby? Yeah, I would think so. I feel like if you're in any sort of public eye, you might feel like you have that pressure to snap back. And I feel like a lot of it obviously comes from celebrities and uh, not as much influencers. Like a lot, most of it probably comes from celebrities. Um, the thing with them is that they usually have surgeries. They have people cooking for them. They have maybe like extra people looking after the baby for them. And I feel like I did feel a bit of pressure, but honestly, I think most of it was just me putting pressure on myself because um, there were no comments of people like expecting me to have the body that I used to have really quickly but I feel like I've said it a few times on my channel like I was so paranoid about people thinking that I was going to change so much after having a baby so I think that was part of it like I kind of wanted to get back to my normal body so that people wouldn't think I changed and things, um, which is so silly. Maybe it was the hormones. <laughs> um, so next time I won't be worried about that as much. Um, but also for me, um, I had a wedding six months after I gave birth to Indy. So I was obviously quite focused on that and I like wanted to fit into my dress okay. And so I uh, I trained with a personal trainer a few times, like eight weeks after, six to eight weeks after, um, which was, it was quite light at first, obviously nothing crazy. It was just to kind of get me used 
used to working out a bit again. Also though, I'm someone who enjoys exercising. So I love being able to run on the treadmill and to lift weights. I, yeah, I wanted to get back to where I was physically as well. So, you know, it is a bit of a mix for me. There shouldn't be a pressure to feel like you need to snap back. You've just given birth to a human being. Like your body has done something um, amazing. Do you treat your body differently now that you're a mother? If so, how? Love your content. Thank you. I think I definitely do. I feel like I'm a lot more like appreciative of my body. I respect it a lot more and I'm more um, patient with it as well. So if there's a goal that I'm trying to get to, I'm kind of, I kind of don't beat myself up if I don't get there as quickly as I want to. Whereas I would have in the past um, because I, I just take it into account that I have had a baby. So in, usually for me, it's my middle part. So like my belly, it kind of still has like, it's not like, I don't think it's big or anything, but it just, I feel like there's always that little bump there. And um, I don't know, sometimes it kind of annoys me and it depends what clothes I'm wearing and things, but on it, most of the time I'm really not that fast and I'm just like, well, I had Indy. I think I'm just a bit softer with myself. Like I'm kinder to my body. Is sex slash sensation the same? Better, worse, post baby? I don't think it's changed anything better or worse. It, it hasn't affected it. Um, yeah. Does it affect other mums? Are you a mum and it's affected, it affected your post baby sex in any way? Um, yeah, let us know down below. Um, how long did it take you to be able to pee slash poop without any pain afterwards? <laughs> Lots of love. But this is the kind of thing I wanted to talk about because it's something that I feel like women are scared to talk about. So for me, I'd heard stories are like about how after it's really painful and you have to like pour water at the same time as peeing because it burns. And for me, I think at the, literally the first few times, so like first three or four times, um, it felt a bit weirder than usual and maybe that it, maybe it was a tiny, a, a little bit more painful just because I had a few stitches and so I was a bit more delicate about sittings and I didn't want to like hurt myself basically. Um, but honestly, like there were no horror stories for me. Everything healed okay. For me, it was literally the first time peeing afterwards, <laughs> which I remember I, it was in like the room that you go to afterwards. Like, yeah, that was weird. Was that in the shower actually? Oh yeah, I think it was in the shower because I, I remember the midwife saying to go to pee in the shower if I needed to for my first one. Wow, that's a bit hazy now. Feels like ages ago. That was weird. Oh, I remember being scared to poop actually, but it was fine. I do remember being scared, but yeah, no horror stories for me. Okay, but this is an interesting one. Um, I'm in my second trimester and as an active person, I still gym lots, but people always make me feel bad about it. That's so bad. Who's making you feel bad? Because when I have my next, whenever I get pregnant next and I have my next baby, I definitely want to be in the gym, like hopefully throughout the pregnancy. But in with Indy, I was like, sod that. I was like, I'm not going near the gym. Leave me alone. I just want to sit there and eat. For my next one, I do want to kind of work out during the pregnancy because I feel like it will make afterwards a lot easier and it will help me to manage the weight a bit better maybe. Anyway, but no, like you should definitely be working out if you want to work out. I feel like it's good for your body, good for the baby. If it's people like giving you looks in the gym, honestly ignore it. I feel like working out while pregnant in like five to 10 years, it'll be like no one will look at you weirdly for it. But I feel like we're still in an age actually where people are a bit like, oh, you shouldn't be in the gym. If you know you're fit and healthy enough to work out while pregnant, I don't think there's any problem with that. Do your nipples go back to normal? Mine are massive and so painful. Yeah, well mine did anyway. I'm sure most women's do and uh, it definitely, yeah, they just get bigger and they go darker because when the when your baby's first born their eyesight isn't very good so it's supposed to be like an easier seen target for them to latch onto so that's why the nipple goes darker it minded yeah i think it happened for me i don't remember how long after actually a few weeks after maybe a few months after um because I didn't breastfeed for long, so I, yeah, my boobs were like, oh, okay, we don't need to do that anymore. Okay, so someone said, I totally understand if you don't answer this one. Do you really go back to normal down there? So, I feel like I have. Um, I feel like it really depends on the person, and it's something that's obviously quite awkward to ask, a, like, a random mum in a playgroup. Also, during pregnancy, I was always, like, making sure to do my Kegel exercises, and after pregnancy as well, so that's when you, like, squeeze your vaginal muscle, vaginal? your muscles down there so that you know they're kind of 
active. <laughs> I think it helps you go back to normal after having a baby. The human body is amazing. I know it gets pretty big for that head. <laughs> I think most of the time, yeah, it shrinks back down. Don't be too worried about that. And I feel like also men put a bit too much pressure on us or like joke around a bit too much about that. It makes women worry about that a bit too much, which is so unnecessary. Um, have you ever thought about surgery after babies or is it just me? I want a tummy tuck and then boob, maybe they meant boob job. But after I had Indy, yeah, I remember actually, no, or was it while I was pregnant? I remember looking up, was it tummy tuck or something like that? I was looking up surgeries after having, after having a baby because probably because of the wedding. So I was like one wondering if there was a quicker way to like get back to normal or something. But um, I don't know, that's as far as I went. Like I looked into it and then meh. I just thought the best way to do it is probably just, just to do it naturally. And I didn't want to mess with my body. Um, well, so that was at that point. But that's not to say that I might not look into it in the future. And um, like, I don't judge any mum that does that. I can like, totally understand why you would want to do that. Um, so for me, I want to wait for anything I do to my body. I want to wait till after I have my second baby. Like I'm interested in getting my implants removed and having a breast reduction because that's something like I didn't think about when I had my boobs done. Like I didn't think about how your boobs change during pregnancy and like get bigger and flabbier. I think the only thing I would look into is to, is a little bit of help in the little pouch that you get. There might be a few different methods for that. So I might just, I, I don't know, maybe. But how long did the bleeding last after giving birth and did you get cramps afterwards too? For me, bleeding lasted, I think it was at least like two weeks, maybe a little bit more. Um, and I was so happy that I had those really thick pads because, oh my God, the bleeding afterwards. Like that's something that I didn't expect. Um, I was kind of like, oh, okay, you have your baby and then, you know, that's it. Um, but yeah, you, I bled afterwards like a, like a heavy period um, for about a week, um, which honestly, that was a part that was so annoying to me because I was like, Oh. <laughs> I was like, I already have a newborn to look after. Like I'm trying to figure out my postpartum body and like my belly and I was so like sleep deprived and I was like, I don't want an added period right now. <laughs> uh, but obviously it's just what your body needs to do. And then your uterus is also shrinking back down. So, you know, cramps come with that as well. So that is something like, yeah, I didn't really expect that. Something to, something to think about. <laughs> Here's a TMI, <laughs> they've written, here's a TMI one. Was there lots of gushing and um, liquid slash blood in your labor? So for me, oh my God, like my labor, it was quite long. It was like over a day. I think it was about 30 hours or so. Most of my labor was without my water breaking or without anything physical actually happening. Like it was just all of the contractions and I was waiting and waiting for my water to break and it, it broke in, a really late stage. Um, it actually broke in while I was in the water. So for me, I didn't see any gushing or anything when my waters broke. I felt it, it felt really weird. It was like, I was underwater and then I just felt this big pop sensation. It felt like how you'd imagine it to feel when like you pop a cork from a champagne bottle. <laughs> That's what it felt and sounded like. So yeah, I didn't see the liquid or anything and I didn't actually see a lot of blood. I remember seeing like, it's kind of like a mixture of liquid. That sounds gross, but I think in the water, I remember just seeing like things floating around. <laughs> gross. Um, but at that stage, I was just like, did not care. For me, the whole thing was such a blur that I didn't, I don't remember a lot of blood or anything. Um, obviously there was some at the end, like after she was born. I just think you're so like not focused on those things. You're mainly just focused on like seeing your baby and just trying to get through labor. How does the placenta come out? Um, clearly never given birth, haha. <laughs> so for most people, you usually give birth and then the placenta comes out uh, maybe like a few minutes after and you have to push the placenta out. So they let you know when the placenta's coming and then you have to do like your last push, um, which is another thing that I feel like they don't really show in films and is not spoken about that much. So um, maybe for some women, they deliver it for you. But for me, um, I had Indy. I think I had her in my hands at that point. And then they were like, okay, you're gonna have to push again for your placenta. And then I did another push. Um, and yeah, not as painful, not as big. It's just a bit weird. <laughs> and I don't remember seeing it or anything. I think again, I was just in that whole blur. Um, so yeah, by that point, you're not really fast about that to be honest. Oh, in how long did your period come back? And I'm really trying to think about this actually because I don't have a really clear memory on it. 
I'm sure it was quite a few weeks at least, like maybe even a month. Hmm. I don't know, maybe if you go back and watch my videos from that time, I might mention it, but I might not. How long after did you feel like your vagina was back to normal? Also, did you know that it's like the bit that we all talk about is actually your vulva? Like your vagina is inside. Isn't that mad? We all say vagina and it's vulva. I would say, you know, the time frame they give you to kind of start having sex again is like six weeks. Um, I feel like that's also how how long I kind of felt it took for me to feel normal down there. So they're all the questions that I've got for today and I hope you guys liked this. Hope you found it helpful or interesting. I tried to be like as honest and open as I could be. And um, I hope this video doesn't get flagged, flagged just because I'm talking about like women things that happen in real life. Please don't flag it, YouTube, please. I hope this can make a lot more women feel um, less alone about their bodies and things like after birth and also maybe make you feel less worried about giving birth if you're pregnant at the moment or if you're planning to be. My overall comment though is it is all worth it even though it sounds really cheesy and everyone says that like I would do all of these gross things again to have another baby. Um, in case you're wondering my necklaces are from Misoma and my shirt's from Nasty Girl I'll link it down below if it's still available um, and my lip is actually a Topshop pencil lip pencil and let me know if you want me to do more body talks I feel like it's so necessary and we need to normalize a lot more things to do that are to do with the woman's body. But anyway, I'll go now. <laughs> I'll stop babbling. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.